Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This fortnightly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, after a stellar performance in 2021, the small cap funds are now seeing a fall. Why is this happening and should the investors be worried about it and how to handle your investments in such a scenario? To discuss all of this and more, we are joined by our CEO, Dhirendra Kumar. Welcome, Dhirendra. Thank you. What we are seeing is that after a blockbuster 2021, the small cap funds are now falling. So why is this happening suddenly and uh, you know how should one tackle this? One is that you know they are like that only. Hmm. When markets fall, small caps fall more freely. Uh, but, you know, uh, my sense is that small caps are not f falling freely on a relative basis. Mm. Uh, large caps have fallen, so have small caps, so have mid caps. And, you know, that, and that is also visible in the multi cap funds and things like that or BSE 500, so to say, which is, a, which is almost like a, B, which is like a multi cap index. Mm. And the reason is quite understandable. Uh, this particular sell off, what is happening in the market is primarily, you know, driven by foreign investors and they have bigger holdings in large caps, you know, they, they hold big companies uh, and a good amount of money which is routed in India through uh, from them comes through the ETF. So that is basically Sensex and Nifty. Mm. Uh, so they pulling out has, you know, has uh, driven down the large caps and since small cap has not witnessed, of course, they have fallen. In a falling market, everything falls, but uh, they haven't fallen as much or, you know, anything substantially more than that. So that is a great consolation. The real, you know, disappointing thing for many new investors is that investors chase performance. Yeah. What they saw in 2021, people try and chase performance that, okay, this is something which is racing speedily. Let me ride it ride it and then you know you are so any new investor investing in equity and starting with a small cap fund and witnessing a big you know 10 percent decline though that 10 percent is not a big decline compared to a large cap but that is not a consolation your 100 rupee becomes 90 you feel sad mm -hmm. and uh, so that is a disappointing bit but the, but nothing beyond that uh, yes this could be a case when you have uh, a sustained declining phase of the market a beer market which lingers for two three years yeah. that is the time when we actually find that you know investors pull out they get away and uh, these small caps go completely out of favor yeah. whenever we have seen a big decline or a sustained decline uh, say the market goes down by 25 30 uh, percent they go down by 50 60 percent and that is something when many investors capitulate you know they they see that decline and they get out at the end when they have lost 50 percent 60 percent and then they make a comeback so you know small caps in those situations could be scary and in the long run they have proven they have proved to be most rewarding and uh, they will remain like this the characters are you know uh, because th there are strengths there are so there is a case for investing in small cap there's a risk of investing in small cap and the risk is not with the company, the risk is with our behavior. But in the scenario such as now where 10% uh, fall has been seen in small caps, should an investor exit or stay and you know wait for uh, them to rise? What should an investor do in such a thing? No, if any investor, which I understand, you know, somebody listening to us should be investing in equity for a couple of years. Mm. So ignore this, it doesn't matter. And in fact, uh, if anybody would have invested a year ago, he will realize that despite this fall, he is still up 25-30%, which is quite substantial. Mm. Uh, yes, you might regret that, okay, the, my money went up to this much and it has come down by 10%, 15% or whatever. But, you know, it's, I don't think it is disappointing. And uh, equities are like this. And small caps are actually on a steroid. Uh, so, uh, it, they, they will also be like this. Yeah. And uh, I don't think this is time for people to run from this. Yes, if you are ex getting extremely, if you are losing your sleep, no investment justifies losing your sleep. Yeah. Money is supposed to, you know, comfort us, not, you know, uh, not trouble us. So with that in mind, if you are getting extremely troubled by the small cap decline or the volatility or the daily ups and downs, I think that is more scary for many people who are not used to it. And especially the new investors. New investors, yeah. yeah. So. If you are able to reconcile with it, if you are able to live with it, if you are able to feel little desire, you know, derive little pleasure out of it, hmm. that okay, you are a regular investor and now you'll be able to buy cheap, hmm. uh, carry on. If you are losing your sleep, 
take your money out, get into a relatively more conservative equity, equity investment, maybe get, get back to it with a balanced advantage fund mm. or, you know, a aggressive hybrid fund or maybe a multi-cap, flexi-cap fund. So, so that, that will be a moderating your in equity investment. That's about it. But if you are fine with it, if you are able to somehow deal with this, carry on. All right. And what's your opinion about the passively managed funds that replicate small cap indices? Uh, before that, let me just put the put in perspective what is the case for a small cap fund and mm -hmm. what is the case against a small cap fund or maybe small cap uh, stock investing. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between a small cap and a large cap stock mm -hmm. is that they are relatively known name when you are investing in Reliance or ITC or mm -hmm. uh, Infosys or TCS or, you know, things like that, then it's a different story. You know, the companies, there is a there is a comfort of scale that these companies will not disappear, uh, these companies will not fumble, uh, but that does not necessarily mean that they will be extremely rewarding. Mm -hmm. There have been phases in the life of these companies where, for years together, they haven't done well. At the same time, there's you know the thinking is that uh, these companies cannot leapfrog. Large companies, when you have a huge operation, you really can't become a five times bigger company mm. when you are at that scale. When you are a small company, you are selling goods worth 100 crore, you are making profit of 10 crore and growing it from 100 crore to 200 crore could be, could be very much in the realm of possibility and that could be in the realm of possibility not only once but for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, so the charm of that, that you know, the, when you invest in such a company, and uh, based on that assumption or with that expectation and you, 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 it turns out to be true, it turns out to be phenomenally re rewarding. Yeah, and that is the charm, that is, that is the draw of small cap. But then there is a, there is a pitfall. The pitfall is that uh, when, you are when there is an economic downturn, when you are faced with a declining failure, you know, there, there is generally a rough weather, interest rates are going up. Hmm. People are, you know, not very excited about buying goods and services. People are losing jobs. They are not excited about spending money on the goods hmm. and services that you provide. You see a shrinkage. You see a decline. And that is something, you know, that is that is a phase which for many of these companies turns out to be very devastating. For some companies, it can actually drive many of these companies completely out of business. Hmm. Some companies are solid enough to withstand and that can, that can linger. So, resilience of these companies sometimes can be tested in a declining market. But you know, th there is, my understanding is that in this changing world, where a lot of things change, our behaviors change, the way we, are, you know, the way we have been ordering food and getting it, it was not possible when I was growing up mm. or when I was in college or when it, uh, you know, even five years back. Even thinking that, you know, when Google was a small company and then it, it became a way of life, the way we are watching movie. So a lot of behavior impacting thing and small companies are able to do things well. They are nimble. They are able to make changes. They are able to adapt faster. And many a times it does not, you know, and, and the rewards are outsized when you, when you get right. So the reward, but at the same time, you know, you can, there are as many casualties the mortality rate of new companies mm. in the, in that phase can also be high but so that is why i think there is a strong case for having a small cap uh, in in your allocation but you have to de-risk yourself in a in a multiple way then, then, then there are disadvantages of another disadvantage of investing in small cap mm. small cap companies you may not have enough information yeah uh, you don't know who this who this fellow is you know mm. when uh, as we keep saying time and again in the context of is choosing a stock choosing a company mm. is that uh, the person who is running the company matters most is he a crooked one is will, he, will he actually treat minority shareholders the same way is he you know excited about growth and is he is he a scalable is he capable of running a scalable company? We, mm. You know, we keep coming across all kind of horror stories about small companies, yeah. even big companies. So ho small companies can completely go under the radar. So in that sense, uh, so there are problems and there are great strengths. They can be multi-bagger and they could be a disaster. That is why I feel that, you know, and there is the information uh, gap uh, mm. about small companies. So despite these pluses and minuses, I think there is a strong case for diversification. Mm. There is also a strong case for entrusting it to professional managers because if I'm going to invest in a small company, then maybe I'll have 1 lakh rupee, 5 lakh rupee, 10 lakh rupee and that will not get me access to the company mm. in a manner whereby I can 
you know, evaluate things logically, uh, comprehensively, or, you know, enough input for me to decide on the company. Yeah. Is it a good enough? Is it a scalable enough? Or is it, a, you know, well-managed company? Or uh, so things like that. Uh, when it comes to, so you are able to spread, the, you know, with your 5,000 rupee, 10,000 rupee, 50,000 rupee, you are able to spread your investments over 10, 15, 20 companies. Because whatever you may say, there are inherent business risks to any business. Yeah. And some of these, despite your best of evaluation, will go wrong. Sometime for the company, sometime for the product, sometime for the weather, sometime for, you know, something or the other. And uh, so some of it will work, some of it will not work. And how do you hedge against that? True. And basically you have to make sure that m most of it works, some of it fails. Yeah. And uh, I think a fund manager is better equipped to do that simply because they have access to it. With the, this advantage of scale actually matters. There is a disadvantage of fund managers that you know many investors will pull out money from the small caps at the inopportune time. When the money has declined, you know, when the fund actually takes a hit by 50%, that is when investors will actually pull out. So that is a disadvantage of small cap. But, you know, otherwise, I think that diversification, specialized access, evaluation, uh, that's a hu huge advantage. So uh, then coming to the real question which you're asking yeah, that... Passively managed. Yeah, funds, the actually. index, small cap index fund versus the small cap funds, actively managed fund. Hmm. Uh, one is that, you know, most of the small cap index the one, the index itself is small, mm -hmm. uh, is relatively new. The ind indices itself, you know, when we talk of Sensex and Nifty, they are old indices. Yeah. There is a formula, there is a mechanism. Second is that, you know, these indices them themselves are new. Then these funds are also new. Mm -hmm. Also, I have my worries about the small cap index because, you know, it's unlike the large cap index, small cap index is... Uh, uh, heavily dependent hmm. on there will be churn from the small cap index as well hmm. you know if you have a small cap index which is made up of 50 companies or 100 companies yeah and 10 of these stocks actually do exceedingly well and they become mid caps and they get ejected from the small caps so what you are looking at the small cap index uh, will be a disadvantage and that is actually visible in the small cap index versus the small cap funds hmm. uh, of course, you know, this is not the right comparison because even the small cap indices in small cap funds are not very old and the small cap indices are not very mainstream. But looking at the 10 year return of the BC small cap index versus the average of, you know, small cap fund average of, you know, return of 10 years. The difference in return is something like, you know, the index is 15% and the fund is 20%. Mm -hmm. So this looks like a 5% difference. It is not 5% difference. It is 33% more. Uh, because instead of 15, if you earn 20, it can make hell of a difference to you uh, in a 10 years time. So the compounding, the difference, and it shows. Uh, so I would say that there is a strong case for small cap actively managed fund. But finding the great small cap fund manager remains a challenge. And it remains a question which you have to take a chance with. All right, time now to move on to our viewers' questions. And the first one has been sent in by Rajat. He wants to understand how does a huge AUM affect the performance of a small cap fund and till what level is it safe to invest? Small cap funds face a problem when they get bigger because uh, there's a dearth of ideas. Small cap, uh, first at the first level, there is a difference between managing a small cap fund and managing a large cap or a mid cap or a, or a very diverse fund. Mm simply because they are very idea intensive. When you look at a large cap fund uh, run by one fund manager as compared to another fund manager as compared to another fund manager as compared to an index fund, mm. the overlap of these portfolios, these four portfolios can well be 80% because large cap funds are supposed to invest in the top 100 companies. So if you have to choose 25 of those top 100 companies, they are likely to be, you know, 20 of those 25 companies might be the same. Mm. And uh, the other advantage is that when you have to buy any of these companies, you don't have to worry about the liquidity. Yeah. They are available in plenty. They don't have a huge impact cost when you try and buy something worth 50 crore, 100 crore, 200 crore, even in a day. Mm. Uh, that may not be the case with small cap. Small cap companies by the very design are sub 1000 crore or 1500 crore company if you are going to buy one but buy a meaningful position in this company mm. uh, then uh, if it is a 100 crore fund or 200 crore fund it might be okay 
uh, if you even if you take a 5% position in a 100 crore fund will amount to 5 crore rupee investment which in many of the small cap companies will still not be possible even today yeah. uh, many of the promising companies are the micro caps or the small caps are edging towards uh, mid cap uh, maybe they are there it might be a possibility but not not underneath that so building a position in small cap could be hard once you actually get bigger uh, then you have to look for more ideas. Big one is the liquidity challenge. The other is that you have, which means that, that this can be dealt only by having more companies. When you have to look for more companies, uh, it's not easy to come by because finding and, you know, discovering of relatively, poor, you know, not so well valued or richly valued small cap, mm -hmm. unidentified, uh, unspotted uh, small cap is not an easy thing. So it takes effort. You are not finding, you know, you're not, not picking those five companies or six companies from the large cap index. So, and this is what we actually see here. The small cap portfolios of one fund compared to other is completely different. There might be no overlap, there might be, uh, might not be any overlap mm. uh, in their portfolio. So, uh, unlike the large cap ones where there could be 80% overlap. So, looking for a company idea. So, as a fund gets bigger, mm. the for the fund to actually find a position, to find a find an idea, a stock idea, and buy it in an impactful manner, gets harder as you get bigger. Because assuming that, uh, say, if there's a 100 crore fund as compared to 1,000 crore fund, uh, you have, assuming that you have chosen or you have decided or the fund manager thought that he will have only 25 companies mm. to have a meaningful impact. So 25 companies, so a 4 crore position in a 100 crore fund will have adequate impact. But in a 1000 crore fund, you may not be able to build that position. And it may not be easy to sell those positions when you want to. So this is, this is one problem. So as it gets bigger, in the mutual fund uh, uh, arena, there is something called a winner's curse. When a small cap fund does well, and normally if you get right with one or two or three good positions, you do well. Mm. And uh, then investors, pour money in that. That is called a winner's curse. And when you get more money in a fund which has done well which when it was small, then the very fact that you have become bigger yeah. is, is a barrier, is a barrier to performance because then you are, so this is the winner's curse. If you win, you are cursed. And if you don't win, then you are not being liked anyway. Mm. Okay. Now, Arjun invested in a small cap fund few months back without understanding how risky they can be. But now he's realized his mistake. So what should he do now? Book the losses and exit or stay on with them? No, if he's young and if he has time, then live with it and learn it now. Uh, and uh, as I keep it, you know, I, I sound very repetitive, but nevertheless, you know, invest regularly and uh, use this time and as I said that you know diversifying investing in small cap could be promising but if you are losing your sleep sleep as I said earlier that if you are actually having a very difficult time living with uh, the declining phase of the market or you know these mm. but you know let me tell you Arjun one this is a phase in which small cap has fallen as much as the mid caps mm. and small cap has fallen little more than the large caps so you could not have actually saved yourself from a decline in this phase so live with it and carry on with your investments Pawan Jakhotia asks, how do you compare investing in mid-caps versus small-caps? Are mid-caps better in Indian context? Uh, to some extent, but you know, the, the problems of mid-caps and the problems and the challenges of uh, mid-caps and the promise of mid-cap is somewhat similar to small-caps. And uh, it is also visible in the definition of the mid-caps and the small-caps that, you know, mid-caps can invest dominantly in mid-caps and reasonably and you know, uh, and a good part of it can be small caps and large caps as well. Likewise for small caps, it could be dominantly in small caps, but uh, can well be there. Yes. And uh, this is actually a very mechanical quantitative yardstick being prescribed by SEBI that uh, top 100 companies are defined as large cap, mm -hmm. next 100 companies are mid caps or next 200 companies and the subsequent the un equity universe is small cap. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that, you know, how company number 151 to company number 100, 210 
uh, I, you know, they have said that this is mid cap or small cap, but that doesn't mean, you know, the characters of those companies will remain the same. If it's yeah. small, it holds promise. If it is a great, great business, well managed business and a growing, rapidly growing business. So I think, you know, don't get into a very precise thing. The characters will remain the same. Yes, there is something which, you know, many of these funds are able to take a shelter. Mm. When a mid cap fund actually gets very big, they tend to invest more in the larger of the mid cap say investing in company number 101 to 125 hmm. they might be classified as mid caps but they are almost tending to be large caps yeah. and many a time they get into the large cap arena and then come back so it, it uh, you know so they they might have greater scalability hmm. but nothing beyond that all right anuj khanna wants to know if one should invest a lump sum in mid and small cap funds right now is it the right time he asks it is never a good time to be investing money in equity per se. Mm. So investing in small cap and mid cap, not. But yes, if at some point you come across a situation, if one that you should have a stomach for that, mm. uh, if you are uh, faced with a situation that, okay, you find these companies, the underlying companies of a fund to be excellent, you know the names, you find them come. But uh, markets go crazy sometimes. I don't think, you know, there was, uh, if somebody has the courage and belief, and he is, you are faced with a situation that, okay, the fund has gone down in value by 40%. And if you have money, uh, mm. then by all means, but, but you know, it's very important to have that, you know, you should have the courage yeah. and you should have the money. Uh, and uh, uh, then only you should do it. Otherwise, right now, I don't see a, a com the complexion of the market is not something which makes it very compelling mm. that, okay, uh, you are getting tempted to somehow, you know, uh, somehow organize money to invest in it. No. Naveen Kora says, market is extremely volatile right now. So how should an investor handle the situation? Deal with it. Markets are volatile now and they will they were volatile before and they will be volatile in future. Uh, it is like that only. Uh, so learn with it. And I think, you know, if you have these two, three, four things in you in nicely in place, it will help you deal with it, mm. which is if you have an emergency fund which means you are not dependent on the market for anything short term. Then if you are, you know, basics are taken care of life insurance, health insurance, and uh, the money that you are investing is not needed for five years or more. And if you are a regular investor, because market, market volatility can be turned into an advantage for yourself. Uh, if you are a regular investor, then you normally feel happy when the market goes down because you are buying cheaper. Yeah. So if you have these three, four way to configure your behavior, uh, you'll feel happy. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, markets will remain volatile. And in fact, markets will, in fact, uh, markets will uh, become even more volatile because we are, you know, in the last five, seven years, 10 years, I've seen that there is an increasing trend Mm. Not only that the companies change more rapidly or the, we are more connected or we are in a more globalized marketplace and uh, you can buy anything from anywhere and uh, you don't know what is going to, so obsolescence, you know, think companies become obsolete or more serviceable or the technological changes, things like that. Mm. Many things changing, but more importantly, uh, the markets have become even more volatile uh, or the integration of the market, foreign investors putting, yeah. pulling putting money and pulling money out. But more importantly, you know, the impact of the uh, media consumption, the scale of media, that is actually making us behave in a different manner. It is having an impact on our behavior. We get, we get uh, uh, very disappointed very quickly or we get very pessimistic very quickly and we get optimistic very quickly. So that, that actually shows in our behavior. And uh, that I think, you know, because 20 years back when I, when I wrote, uh, you know, when I was writing the edit of Mutual Fund Insight, mm. when we got started, it was the second or third editorial of the uh, magazine. Mm. I was talking about, you know, the CNBC TV channel and I was uh, mostly, you know, at, in value research, I had put an embargo on not watching TV during lunchtime mm -hmm. uh, because everybody was, uh, you know, getting tempted to watch CNBC because I thought that, you know, this is just... Uh, and this is a distraction. This do, people, lot of people think have this, uh, you know, poor notion of being an insider by watching CNBC. 
uh, it is nice for advice and general things or for information but I think you know the moment you get to see that news in fact all the news that you see on CNBC cannot be on news on CNBC before it is there on the stock exchanges website that is the law of the land a company can reveal something meaningful first on the stock exchange and then only it can appear anywhere else so in that sense you know I, I always thought so and then I thought that CNBC is a huge distraction uh, when I look at it now uh, CNBC looks like an ancient time, you know, uh, hardly, uh, you know, the, the amount of social media that, that, we, that we are witnessing or the amount of data available on the number of websites, the number of telegram groups, the way, uh, and, and you know, a lot of these things are underground, they are not visible and everybody is in his own community and they are, it is so overpower, overpowering. So, uh, markets will become even more volatile as a result of all this. Well, Naveen, I hope you've got your answer, but I would say that you must watch our um, previous episode of Investors Hangout for a more elaborate explanation. Uh, do watch our March 11th episode. Now, today's last question has been sent in by Surekha. She asks, are monthly dividends a profitable way in comparison to SWP for generating regular income? If you don't pay taxes mm. and these monthly dividends will also not matter, uh, you know, will not add up to your income that you become taxable then uh, it doesn't matter either of them are the same otherwise swp might be a better way simply because it you will you are able to structure a withdrawal plan based on your needs be, and you can also customize it you can also change it over a period of time depending on your investment performance assuming that you choose to withdraw 8% of your capital and if your fund has or your investment has generated 12% you can increase it or you will you will create a buffer for yourself if it if it turns out to be disappointing you expected eight percent and you that is how you actually plan to withdraw and uh, your investment returned only six percent so next year you will be able to revise after 12 months that okay let it be lower because you don't want to eat your capital yeah. so you will have greater flexibility you will and dividends will come at their own time when the fund company chooses to pay you the dividend yeah. so you will have greater flexibility uh, and uh, you're getting money at timing of your choice uh, is and scale is better with SWP. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this episode. Thank you, Dhirendra. Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers. Do keep sending us your questions and keep watching this space for more information. If you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.